welcome to another cat video. So today we would like to dive a little bit deeper into the Mercedes side pod and crash tube and mirror design and answer some open questions. So in my last video, I described the design of the mirror and how would you approach these rules as a Formula One designer. And today we would like to have some closer looks at some of the details and also about how we can design the crash tube cover and so on. So first of all, I want to add something to the mirror design of uh, my last video. In um, regulation 364, the mirror housing is defined. In section A, we define the body, the mirror body itself. Section B tells us that the inner stay needs to be connected to the mid chassis, which is fulfilled here. Section C defines the rear stay. And we already discussed in my last video why there can be multiple elements. But there's one point in section D where it tells us that after trimming, it must produce a single volume. So when all these three mirror parts, so the inner stay, the housing and the rear stay are trimmed together, it needs to form a single volume. So how can Mercedes manage to have separate elements there anyway? So basically the trick is that you produce these five elements with a lower connection. The only important thing here is that this lower connection is not wider than 10 millimeters. And now after trimming, this forms a single volume because we have our inner stay, which is connected to the housing. The housing is connected to the rear stay. And all these five elements of the rear stay are connected with each other through this connection. This connection can have any shape as long as it's not wider than 10 millimeters. Now, what's happening after this is that I can take my side pod surface, which is just a very simple surface here. And the trick is that this connection of these elements is below the side pod surface. So I'm going to show you now what's happening if you trim that together. So if you trim that, you basically get something like this which erases our connection from before. So after trimming, it basically looks like this because the connection of these five elements was below the surface. And in section E, it tells us to trim it to the side pod or to the mid chassis. And now suddenly this connection is gone and we have five separate elements where only the first element is connected to the housing. So it's perfectly fine with the regulations 364. And that's a little trick you can use to still have separate elements in this area. But let's think of the following scenario. We are a Mercedes design engineer and we want to have these super tight side pods. We can see the crash tube up here. This is the upper element and our side pod can definitely not cover these crash tubes. So what do we do? We go back to the rule book and have a look at article three for the aerodynamic components. Here, all the dimensions and everything for the bodywork around the car is defined, but it says nothing about the crash tube cover. The funny thing is that the crash tubes or side impact structure, as they call it in the regulations, are defined in article 13, so much further down. And if we have a look at article 13.5.1, so at the, pretty much at the very bottom of the regulations, it says that the two side impact structures must be fully enclosed by bodywork and shouldn't be exposed to external airstream. But it doesn't tell us anything about how this bodywork should look like. So the rules of Article 3 don't really apply because we're in Article 13.5. So we can design this as we want, basically. And we could create a cover that could look like this, for example. So we create a downwashing wing, or some kind of wing structure. It doesn't really have to be a wing profile, but it should be within the regulation box 12. So within our reference volume body wear, which looks like this. And that's why we have this little trim here. So that's also something we can see on the Mercedes design. Now, the next topic are the mirror stays. We already talked about the rear mirror stays. And we can just combine them here in the exact same way that we saw before. 
So we just combine them in here like that. The connection of these five elements is underneath. And as soon as we trim it to that wing element, this connection is just, uh, just gone. We just cancel it out and we end up with five separate elements. The next thing now, which is pretty interesting, is the mirror itself. So the mirror housing and then the inner stay. Because article 364b tells us that the inner stay needs to be connected to the mid chassis. So let's have a look at this. We have our inner stay here. And let's look at this example. This is what most teams do. So we have a long stay that connects the mirror housing to the mid chassis. But how can I end up with such a short stay as we see it at Mercedes? So a stay which is just running down here and to that part. That part is definitely not the chassis or the mid chassis because the mid chassis ends here at this surface. So how can we still have a mirror stay that is pretty close to here, forming a six element to create outwash, but still connecting to the mid chassis. The answer is that we could just create something like this. So we create a mirror stay that is actually running underneath the surface of that element and then towards the mid chassis. So it's connecting to the mid chassis here, but we can't see it after we trim it because when we trim it all together, we chop this part underneath the surface off again, just like we did with the five rearward elements. And suddenly we end up with a wing or with the mirror that has six elements and pretty much looks like what Mercedes and Aston Martin are running. So that is another little trick how to get around these rules or to use the rules to the maximum extent. And it shows some clever thinking of Mercedes here. And let's see if they can continue to drive with these kind of mirrors. So I hope you like this little insight into the design world and let me know if you like more of these videos in the future. So thanks for watching and see you at the next video.